The disciples of Jesus were crushed when he died on the cross. They felt like all their hopes had been dashed to pieces in one horrible day. After all, what is there to do when the person you've placed your hopes in dies? Their world was suddenly shattered. A couple of men who were part of the religious elite in Jerusalem actually chose this moment to take a stand against their colleagues who had just orchestrated Jesus' death by crucifixion. Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body, and he, together with Nicodemus, buried Jesus in his own brand new tomb. But they did it quickly, right before sundown on Friday. Jewish religious customs strictly prohibited doing any kind of work, like burying someone, on the Sabbath on Saturday. It was God's holy day of rest. This meant that no one was able to do anything to give Jesus the customary attention one would give a loved one who had died. Everyone waited all day Saturday, itching for Sunday to come so they could run to the tomb and give Jesus a proper burial. There were several women who were determined to do this. Early Sunday morning, before the sun had even risen, they grabbed aromatic herbs and ointments and headed for the tomb. They intended to wash down his body and place the sweet-smelling product on him before carefully wrapping the body in strips of cloth. This was how Jews honored their dead. Along the way, they were wondering how they would get into the tomb. They knew there was a large stone rolled over the entrance to the tomb. It was actually more difficult than that. The Jewish authorities had heard something about Jesus claiming that he would rise from the dead, so they made Pilate place a Roman guard at the tomb and seal it with an official Roman seal so that any who broke it would face the wrath of the Roman state in full force. When the women got to the tomb, however, they found that the stone was already rolled away. They were met by two men in dazzling clothing who told them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. One of them, Mary Magdalene, didn't seem convinced. She ran and told Peter, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter and John ran to the tomb and confirmed that there was no body there. Mary just stood there outside the tomb crying. She had waited to honor Jesus in death, and now they had taken the body away from her. She looked into the tomb and saw two angels in white who asked her, Woman, why are you crying? She told them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Right then, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she didn't recognize him. He asked her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She thought he was the gardener. Maybe he could help her. Sir, she said, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. That's when Jesus called her by name. Mary. And that's when she recognized him. Her heart leapt within her and she cried out to him in her heart language, Rabboni, teacher. And she must have fallen at his feet and grabbed onto him because Jesus told her, don't hang on to me. I'm about to return to my father. Go tell the disciples that I'm going back to my father who is now your father my God, who is now your God. So she ran and told the other disciples, I have seen the Lord. This is what Jesus accomplished on the cross. He paid for the sins of the world. He took upon himself all our failures and evil acts so that we could not only be forgiven, but so that we could be offered the chance to be restored to what we should have been all along, made right and good. When Jesus rose from the grave, 
He sealed his victory over sin and death. And because he accomplished this victory, he can now offer every one of us forgiveness of sins and life eternal. He promises one day to raise to eternal life those who have put their faith in him. Jesus lives today, and he invites you today to put your trust in him so that he can make your life new, so that he can restore you to a relationship with God and begin to restore your relationship with everybody around you. He wants to give you the gift of eternal life. Will you trust in Jesus?